Today we are talking about five hidden fees or sneaky ways that dealerships will add to the purchase price of your new car. So in today's video, I'm gonna outline all the details and the differences between add-ons, fees, accessories, packages to help you find some clarity in knowing how the price of your car is calculated. I'm also going to share with you some acceptable fees that you can expect to pay at almost any dealership you go to, as well as some things that without a doubt you should avoid. And if a dealership is going to charge you these, then you should try to look elsewhere. Hopefully if you're looking, whatever manufacturer you're looking at, if, for example, if you're looking at Subaru, hopefully there's more than one in a close vicinity of where you live so you have multiple options. But I've had people travel to us as far as Florida, Texas, California to purchase new cars from us because we don't participate in any of these sneaky or hidden ways to charge or overcharge customers in an environment where we have a lack of supply and we have the ability or some dealers have the ability to unfortunately charge more than necessary. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Alex. I like to share weekly videos all on Subaru related topics. So if you enjoy those types of videos, consider clicking the subscribe button down below. If you guys learn something new and get value out of this video, please remember to click the like button. That really helps me out a ton and I would really appreciate it. And as always, if you guys have questions, leave those down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer those for you. The first hidden fee that we unfortunately commonly see in today's times is what they call a market adjustment. If you see a market adjustment on a price worksheet that a salesperson has handed you, I would ask to negotiate that completely off or walk and go to another dealership. Here's how it's presented to you. They say, hey, we've got a car here, it's in high demand. Maybe it's the Subaru Crosstrek or Subaru Forester, which is true. Both these cars are very much in high demand. They're very hard to get. And a lot of times there's a three, sometimes a four month wait time on getting them. And so maybe this car, the manufacturer suggested retail price, the way it's built is $31,000. And we'll, we'll look at that here in just a second. I took the window sticker off so we can look at that and I can show you guys how that price is calculated. But they say, hey, this car is, the manufacturer suggested price is $31,000. So if you go on Subaru.com and build it out with the same equipment, that's what it's gonna come out to. But because of the lack of supply and the, the way the market is right now, we, we gotta charge you an additional uh, markup. Maybe it's $1,000, $2,000. I've seen upwards of $5,000 on some OEMs and that's, that, that's crazy. So that is not a charge from the auto manufacturer. So it's not from Subaru, that's from the individual retailer that you are working with. So uh, if they are charging that, like I said, I would walk away. I'm gonna show you guys how to find the MSRP on the car you're looking at just to make sure that you're getting a fair price. You wanna walk up to the driver's side passenger window where the Monroney label is listed. I've pulled this one off this cross track over here and put it in the back so we can actually see it without the sun glaring on it. This is how you determine the exact car and the manufacturer suggested retail price. So here is the MSRP, it's $31,022 even. You'll notice this does include the destination and delivery charge of $1,295. That is not charged by the retailer, that is charged from the auto manufacturer. And you see this on any OEM, you're gonna see that. That is your true MSRP and for this build, you wanna make sure you do not pay above that. Of course, there's other things like taxes and things that, that are involved, and I'll share that with you here in just a moment later in this video, but this is how you build it out. Now, if you wanna to go to Subaru.com, maybe take a picture of this, go home and build this same car out online, you will get the exact same price that you see down below. That's how you can verify that you're getting it truly for MSRP. Now, some of these things over here, these are commonly confused for add-ons, dealer add-ons or fees. These are not dealer add-ons or fees. This is how the car is built. So if you were to build a car, which likely right now for a Crosstrek, for example, you'd have to custom order one anyways, you, if you select these same items, your price will come out to be the same. But if you opt out of these items, like the optional package, if you don't need the power seats, the blind spot indicators on the side mirrors, heated seats, or moonroof, you can opt out of that and save a little over $2,000. Same with these individual accessories. There's about 18, uh, or not 18, $1,187 in accessories, another 150 for LED upgraded lights uh, on the interior. But you can see some of these optional accessories that are added here. You can opt out of those if you really 
didn't want them. So when we get a car from the factory, a lot of times they come with anywhere from three to five accessories already on them and an optional package because they are popular. The factory is going to send us popular options. Typically, we don't get a bare bones car because it's while it might be a lower price, it's truthfully not as popular. A lot of people want these items. The second fee that I honestly cannot believe is still charged today is something called nitrogen filled tires. So instead of putting 100% air in your tires, some dealerships will put nitrogen in your tires. And, and some people have made the claim that this additional, this, uh, this nitrogen will make your tire pressures uh, less volatile. So here in the Midwest, we have uh, hot days and cold days and, and the temperature fluctuates sometimes from the morning to the afternoon very quickly. And so you can make that argument if that's the case that those nitrogen tires will help you with your tire pressures not getting too low or too high. But as far as I know, that is not true. I've never had nitrogen tires in my car and I've uh, been driving cars for uh, going on 15 years now. Never have had the need for them. So if nitrogen does have any benefits, I've, I've never needed it. And honestly, I don't, I don't feel like anybody else needs to have those either. So that's another fee that I would look out for that I would without a doubt not pay for if I was purchasing a new car from a dealership. The third hidden fee or sneaky way that dealerships will add to the price of a car is by charging for window tinting. Well, this car came from the factory. You may notice this back window looks a little darker than the front window. Well, that's because all the windows, except for the windshield, of course, and your front windows are already tinted. Now, if you go with a base trim level, typically in most auto manufacturers, and this is the case with Subaru, if you go with a base trim level, you will not have window tinting. But even if you wanted to add window tinting, I would probably suggest shopping that around yourself. And we have a, a guy that comes and does our window tinting. I did it on my car. Also, he charges about $100 just to do the front windows, and that includes this little triangle here, the special cutout for that. But that is just for your standard window tinting. Now, you can get ceramic tinting and all these other things that are offered, and some of those may have some benefits. And I'm not saying not to get window tinting, but don't pay an inflated amount for window tinting, especially when your Subaru is already going to come with it, at least in the rear, and you may find you don't even need it up front. By the way, if you were curious, why do only the back windows come tinted, but not the front windows? I believe this has something to do with individual state laws. Subaru is selling cars all across the U.S. And if they tinted the front windows, there are some states that uh, I believe don't even allow window tinting or the window tinting they do allow is not as dark as uh, some of these. And so the front windows cannot be tinted from my understanding because of that reason. Another add-on or hidden fee that dealerships like to add on to their new cars is something called theft protection or VIN etching. And that's where you'll see sort of the size of this right here you'll see the vin number on your windows under the the trunk lid under the hood in different areas of the car and this is because if somebody were to steal the car they might try to part it out and they can track down these individual parts that somebody is selling elsewhere so that that is why that is the uh the, the claim i believe to the the benefit of the vin etching if if i'm wrong let me know down in the comment section below but we don't even offer that on our cars and uh, you could argue maybe okay a sports car somebody might want that on there but even then like i said i've never had that and uh, i don't i don't think that the vin etching is necessarily going to deter somebody from stealing their car i'm sure there's ways to remove those those vins so uh, not something that I would pay extra for and certainly something to look out for if a dealership is going to, to charge that and, and make it mandatory. There's one more additional sneaky fee or charge that you will see on some new cars that auto dealers charge. I'll show you, it's on this one here, one of our used cars. But before I get to that, here in just a second, I am gonna tell you about some, some fees that are mandatory and some things that you will see without a doubt when you're purchasing a new car. So this fifth and final add-on that you commonly see on some new cars is only an aesthetic difference. Can you pinpoint, can you tell which what the difference is? Let me know down in the comment section below. It's a subtle design characteristic, but that is the pin striping. So it's not as as popular as it used to be. And so none of our none of our new cars come with it. And uh, I believe some of our other dealerships did charge this or did 
offer this in the past. We didn't charge for it, but we, we did offer it. And so maybe you want this and, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. By the way, if you want any of these things, if, if the dealership's gonna throw it in and not charge you above MSRP for it, then, then by all means go for it. But uh, that is another thing that is not necessary. And if a dealership is going to make that mandatory, then I would negotiate that out of your deal. I mentioned to you guys just a moment ago that there are necessary fees that you will have to and can expect to pay when purchasing your car outside of just your total purchase price. Now, if you want to see how to determine whether or not this price is fair, click on the YouTube card above to the right. I talk about where the market's at and where pricing stands right now for new Subarus so you can see that. But to give you the short answer, paying full MSRP on a 2024 Subaru Crosstrek right now in July of 2023 is an excellent price. So you see the selling price here. Just below that, you have your sales taxes. If you did have a trade involved, you would see that there. And by the way, at least as it stands for the state of Kentucky, and I think a lot of states in the US are this way, if you do have a trade in, not only will your total purchase price be deducted by that amount, but also your sales tax will be deducted because you get a little bit of a tax credit. So in the state of Kentucky, we pay 6% sales tax on the total purchase price of the car, this $31,000. So in that event, if we had a trade-in, say the trade-in was $10,000, our $1,800 would be reduced by $600, uh, 6% of $10,000 for the trade. Hope that makes sense to you guys. If you have questions about that, leave that down below. Other than that, you should only see two other numbers, your title and registration fee, which is going to be dependent on where you're registering your vehicle at, whichever state, and then a dealer processing fee. Every dealership is going to have a dealer processing fee that they charge to, to do all your title work for you. So believe it or not, there is some, some work involved in that and uh, uh, making sure everything is done properly. So that is a pretty normal uh, fee, anywhere from three to $500, but there are some dealerships that charge well above this. There are certain, certain state laws that have uh, uh, maximum amounts that a dealership can charge for that. And then there's some that are completely unregulated. And so sometimes you'll see a dealer fee that is, that is well above this. So you should only see those four numbers when looking for the total purchase price of your car when somebody hands you, a, a salesperson hands you this worksheet. Your sale price, your sales tax, the title and registration, and your de dealer fee, which is going to bring you $33,360.32 for your total purchase price on this Crosstrek Premium. I hope that you guys have found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please remember to click the like button. That helps me out a ton. I really appreciate that. If you guys haven't done so already and you enjoy videos like this, click on the subscribe button down below. Comment below with any questions you guys have. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have related to new car purchases, used car purchases, Subarus. I'm here to help, so leave those down below. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.